All right, go ahead. Actually, is this going to be? <laughs> Will you be posting this? Probably. Cool. Oh boy. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so last time, if I recall correctly, like, uh, Favid and Mar, uh, entered this village, uh, looking for a place to stay in and a place to grab a meal and rest, basically. And as they were, uh, as Favid was uh, chugging down a drink and Mar was uh, enjoying their meal, they were approached by a heavily armored human guard. And they were invited by that said guard named Adva Night Eye to sit with his elven noble employer for a specific quest. In further detail explained by the elven noble named Sandelian, he is from a family of uh, I guess you could call them archaeologists or artifact collectors, where their money comes in from basically putting up these artifacts for what are what do you call those again? Uh, Auction. Auction. Yeah, there we go. Auctions, and they the and Sandelian was asking for adventurers. Specifically, adventurers that has come from far and wide places because he doesn't trust the locals. He was specifically asking for adventurers now because most of his men died in the crypt that they were exploring. Last, uh, last he said he had five guards, including uh, Advin as the leader of the group having the highest rank of a gold a golden plated badge and the four uh, which uh, died in the crypt low are lower ranking guards which he requested at least to have a, have a proof or at least have a reminder of their of stead guards to he has specifically requested the badges of these guards to be retrieved as a reminder for him and for the families and towns that they've been, they've they've come from, as a as a means of at least one way to. Uh, the same way that you give like the same way that you give family of a soldier who passed a flag. Yeah, a commemora uh, commemoration for honoring the dead, basically. Mm -hmm. And besides that, he also asked uh, both Favid and Mar uh, to at least bring three artifacts back from the crypt. And as he explained that, he gives you a, a map that he himself has brought up. And its starting point is from this tavern, or this village itself, and it leads to a forest and deep within, deep within the forest there you were uh, the path you are going to take is uh, over a bridge uh, to a bridge or through a bridge over uh, a river and after that you will be able to see this one specific tree stump in which there in which it is it has a mechanism that reveals the the crypt beneath it, and that's how, and that's the entire detail of the map. Okay. And uh, we we will be starting off on the choice of: Are you going to continue now, or are the two of you going to uh, uh, at least uh, our role play wise uh, rest in the inn next door? That is owned by the bartender, Mr. P. Uh, Favid would first like to ask, so what is the time frame you need this job done in? Because I'd 
like to have a rest so that I'm at my tip-top condition before I go out into some dungeon. As you say that, and uh, the, the elven noble looks at you, uh, he does notice that you you were shit-faced <laughs> and were drinking on the counter. As he looks back at the counter and sees the barbarian mug. And uh, he sighs and uh, I guess... Understandingly, he says, uh, I guess uh, for your case, take as much rest as needed before you go. I've already lost so much of my good men, so I don't want to lose my hope as well in you. Should only be a night. Mar nods. <sighs> And, of course, if you, as of thanks in advance for you accepting my quest, here is half of the original payment I have thought up. And he hands you a pouch, a hefty pouch, and as you open it, it contains 500 GP. Oh, wow. Favorite's eyes widen quite a bit. This is more money than he's almost ever been paid. So that would be 250 each. Yep. Right. Of course, this is thanks, mostly because you are here to not only save my reputation under my household, but also help me honor those of my guards that I cherish the most. This job is one thing, but good men don't deserve to be forgotten. Looks at, at Mar for a second and looks back to the, uh, to, uh, Cipherselian? That's the name, right? Sendelian. Sendelian, yes, yes. He looks over to Sendelian and says, well, If you pay like this, I wouldn't mind joining your core. Let's oh. save that for after. Let's save things like that for after we finish this job. Oh, no, you misunderstood. I don't pay my guards. Everything, everything that they need is given to them already. They don't need the money. Their families are cared for already. Their toiletries, whatever they may need, whatever race they may be, is already taken care of. The money is basically just, you know, customary to pay adventurers. I don't pay my... I don't pay my employees. They're like family to me. He nods a bit wistfully isn't that right Advent Advent quickly nods not ruling with not ruling with tyranny but with a big heart uh, wins the respect and absolute loyalty of everyone around you Can I see if the? Can I roll to see if the uh, the guard is like genuine about uh, about agreeing? Go ahead, roll inside. Well, nope. I as far as I can tell, yeah. <laughs> as far as you can tell, he is absolutely loyal to his employer. His face is stone cold, and that's it. <laughs> okay. David looks to Mar and says, Well, if there's nothing else you, sh you need to ask, 
I don't think we should waste too much of the man's valuable time. I sh I have to agree with you there. Okay, so in full honesty, there's actually no like additional area of the map <laughs> under this other roof. <laughs> Cause that's okay. <laughs> so let's just say that uh, after this, you take the money and the map, and you you leave the establishment to go to the other side. You are uh, greeted by wait, 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 the wait. same person. Wait, is He's not allowed to take the mug with him, is he? No, you're not. Sorry. Oh, no. He's... Oh, Wait, actually... My uh, booze! My hold money! Hold on, thinking about it. Thinking about it, hold on, hold on. This is the same as... This is uh, two establishments and two buildings under the same person, so I'd probably say that he'd be nice enough to allow you to bring a mug from one establishment of his to another of his. He's quickly taking it. Take it with the uh, yeah, so you basically carry the mug. Obviously, not normally with just one hand. You'd probably be carrying it like uh, with two hands in front of you or un under your arm, like holding it right beside your body as you walk towards the establishment. And as you enter the establishment itself, you see the same man on the counter. And this time, it's not, it's not a bar counter, more like a receptionist type of desk at the, start, uh, the front of the door. And he says, ah, oh, customers. <laughs> he, he chuckles a bit because he knows, he, knows, he knows who you are already. I'm assuming you're here to stay and probably rest. Yes, just one night. Uh, I'm... Will you be sharing a room, or are you going to take your own separate rooms? Yeah, yeah, we'll share a room. I think at this point, they've... At this point, we've probably been traveling together for quite some time, and... Uh, well, if that's the case... A room is one GP. Okay. Uh, Mar is going to take a coin from her purse and give it to him. And as he takes the coin, uh, he tosses it into the air with his thumb. And as it is still in midair, he hands you he hands you the room to your key and opens his uh, opens wide a. Uh, uh, his pocket and the gold coin drops into it and you hear the clinking of a lot of coins in his body just just a impressive i hope you enjoy your stay and as he, as he as he as he does said so he quickly opens the door behind him and you hear the dishes getting clean behind the door and he enters and he he just loops back around basically to go to the other establishment. Fabian clutches his, 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 his mug slightly more tightly and almost kind of tries to raise it to him. He says, I most certainly will have a nice night. And as you say that, the door slams in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to walk to his room. For their room. Yep. The moment he he the moment he sits down on on the the bedding, he's already drinking again. <laughs> okay. Well, first let me describe the entire room. Oh right. I don't have any. I don't have the map prepared, but I have. I guess I have written down or probably made a mental note of how the room will look like. And uh, so, as the two of you open the door. Uh, the, the entire thing uh, looks about similar to your normal everyday inn with a, a few key differences that there is a stack of barrels instead of a uh, 
instead of a wardrobe or a cabinet or a chest at the foot of your bed. There are a stack of barrels. Uh, and Barrels at the foot of the bed? What is this, Skyrim? <laughs> I was about to describe. There's a stack of barrels uh, decorated to make it look like it's a cabinet against a wall. And there is a barrel that is makeshift and crafted to look like a chest at the foot of your bed. It seems as if the the basic uh, theme of this entire thing is uh, surrounding ale and uh, containers of it, basically. Your your bed frame, also made out of, uh, it looks like it's handcrafted and a DIY project made out of barrels. Your bed sheet, uh, your blankets, your pillows have the same uh, intricate uh, handwoven design as the curtains of the tavern and the tablecloth of the tavern on the other side. Everything looks like it's been refurbished and broken pieces or broken things from the, sta- from the tavern that's been refurbished and remade to become something else because in most cases tavern there's fights that happens in taverns and some objects will be broken so it looks like this is uh, a way of the tavern owner of of basically recycling uh broken materials you can specifically say that even though each bed looks like looks grand it has its own frame that reaches to the ceiling that has its own uh, small pillars that hold up curtains. The curtains are uh, stitched up and tattered curtains that are similar to the taverns. And those specific uh, poles that hold up each curtain are actually table legs that lost it. Basically just uh, like one table leg for- Broken off table legs. Yeah, basically. So, okay. as much as it does look all neat and stuff, you look like it looks like the entire place is basically a recycling bin because <laughs> hey. everything has been given a different purpose. <laughs> hey, I mean, he feels it's... very at home here. He loves he loves this kind of decor. Any 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 remarks? Uh, looking over to uh, to Mar with a uh, with a witty smile, he says. Well, I don't think the tavern would have the last tavern would have been as mad with me when I broke that table if they could do things like this with them. Yeah, it's creative, I'll give them that. Smart too. Awesome. awesome. And awesome. with that, Mar goes over to one of the beds and sits down on it. And Favorite does the aforementioned sitting on his bed and taking a gulp. DC 12, constitution saving throw. I think I've been, uh... No, no, my, my saving throw modifier is the same as my normal modifier, so I haven't been making a mistake. 18. Hold on. It's 15 plus 3, I'm saying the time. Okay. Uh... Yeah, uh, this one kicks, or more like digs in deeper and pounces hard, farther against you. Basically, just how it is, it has been described, like always, harder than the third gulp. And don't mind the background noise. <laughs> As you chug down, it lines down, burning again. Uh, this time, not only does it feels like your jugular has been ripped off and your chest has been caved in it looks like uh your stomach starts to starts to take notice of what you're drinking and kind of acts up against the heat and as you you basically feel the heat in your stomach this time like it's expanding as if basically the lion has after killing its prey, is now taking it piece by piece from uh, stomach first. 
David is very pleased with the quality of this drink. <laughs> and as both of you actually sit onto uh, the bed, you are surprised by the fact that despite these are all somewhat makeshift, it feels as if the bed itself instantly envelops at least a part of your body that was already laying there. It's 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 a uh, it's, it's, it's it's not built really for... soft. Yeah, but it's it's not built for people as as tall as us, is it? <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> so I, I think I think I think his like like the the lower part of his legs to his feet are kind of hanging off the other side. I like to imagine. As that. as the both of you sit in, you basically feel like a, a slight softness, and then suddenly you feel the the wooden uh, the wooden frame under already. <laughs> As you fully put in your weight. Well, I so, mean, to, to be fair, we are a lot bigger than what normally would be using them, so. so and probably I, than what he expected. Thanks, so I, I have a question. I like. About, like, I know I've got, like, four gulps left of this thing, according to what you said yesterday. So, like, how often do I get to take one? Uh, well... You can continue chugging, actually. Like, oh, so, so no I can, breaths. <laughs> so I can take, like, four rolls? But that right? depends. I can, I yeah, can, you can yeah, just... Yeah, I, I can just take. roll until I fail? Alright, cool. Yeah. Alright, one chug. That's a 20. Not a nat one, though. Uh, okay, 30, 20. Another one? Oh dear, that's an 8. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Okay, stop. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fourth chug. <laughs> All right. You take your You take your fourth chug and you... No, wait, this is my you sixth. You already know what... No, this is my oh, sixth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your sixth chug. Wait, no, the... I, I had three yesterday. Uh -huh. And then... One Fifth. just a little oh, bit before, yeah. and then two more. The 18. And then, okay, yeah, you're a sixth chug. You already know what to expect. You you feel the same thing, uh, searing, hot, and painful through your jugular and down to your chest, and you feel it heat up your stomach. And then as you're about to take your... Seventh. As you're about to take your seventh chug of the... Uh, of the... From the mug, you you suddenly feel your stomach basically uh, protesting. Yeah, protesting to how much alcohol content there is inside of it. So you basically fail to chug it in, and you spit it back into your mug. It kind of cost us, and it's like. <coughs> Oh, Mari, you should have tried some of this. <laughs> it's already with spit. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, come on. Drinking's always better with two. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Favid with a shit face would feel this, but Mari, as you look, you look at Favid, Favid's eyes is already watery. <laughs> And how painful that felt before he could take like a seventh. Oh wait, I'm about to take a seventh. You tell me. <laughs> no, before you could have taken a seventh. Oh okay. <laughs> hey, I like rolling dice. Rolling dice is fun. <laughs> okay, that leaves you with two left. Yeah, two left still. Okay, he's gonna go in for more. I'm gonna get all nine goals. Oh, oh. Uh, ah, you said nine. nine. Yeah. <laughs> I actually said that before the roll came out. <laughs> so as you do try and chug, uh, and you like retry what you started, uh, it really doesn't bode well in in your insides, and it protests again. You're, it's either that your stomach is telling you to not continue in consuming more because it's already full, or your body can no longer take in alcohol, and your brain is basically telling your stomach to 
protest because there's too much. Ugh. And your this liver is, might fail. This is the first time that I think alcohol has bested me. Ooh. And he, he puts the mug down reluctantly. <laughs> he says, uh... Oh, maybe I should have only bought one bottle. Well, hindsight's twenty twenty. And Mark can see that he's uh he's he's like regretting all. <laughs> Don't mind a background noise. <laughs> Somebody's just consumed the uh the the elephant drink in the tavern. <laughs> he, he... The elephant you've been talking about is actually the gate opening, and that that sound earlier is just a truck's horn. Yeah, the. the... <laughs> Mark can, like, see on his face that he's, like, starting to question some choices that he's made. <laughs> but he doesn't- <laughs> but he doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> to be honest, you're actually, uh... You're, ac you're actually downed a one bottle, and you're halfway through the second one. Uh, one well, I'm, bottle... I'm one chug away from being done with the second one. No, you're still through chugs, you can't continue on- you can't yeah. take the... Chug, because your body is uh, basically protesting. What I'm saying is, the the huge bottle of main, <laughs> it, one takes in like four chugs if you put it in a barbarian mug. Basically. I see. He's uh, he's lamenting the fact that he uh he's lost out on on a few on a piece of gold or two because of his weak liver, apparently. So I'm assuming you're still not going to rest for a while, uh, or... Uh, Mar is just kind of giving... Mar is just kind of giving him an I told you so look. <sighs> so while uh, Favit is... Lamenting over the drink, and Mar is like uh, a dis disappointed parent giving giving the look of "I warned you" to David. Uh, you hear a a knock against your room's door, and uh, a familiar voice uh, saying, that the, the "Room's service." Okay, uh, Mar is going go to go it. and open the door. And as you open the door, you see, uh, uh, yes, a familiar face indeed. The barmaid, Miriam, but it's unlike uh, what she was wearing in the tavern earlier. Her uniform has uh, changed somewhat. She isn't wearing uh, uh, the typical barmaid uh, apron and... Instead is um, more like wearing uh, something akin to a maid's outfit. And she is uh, actually holding a silver, uh, silver platter. <laughs> On a silver platter, she is holding a, uh, a flask. An empty flask. Uh, And a uh, turned over a card, a card facing downwards, and a uh, what's it called? There we go. Uh, a stamp, I guess. A card, a stamp, and a flask on the plate, and she comes in inside. Uh, this is um, uh, cu customary uh, for the two establishments of Mr. Pete. It's uh, simply for this card. Every time you enter whichever establishment you get 
you get to stamp your card and if you do complete the entire card with your stamp you'll get to stay in for free and uh, order as many as you like and uh, Mr. Pete's uh, generosity he he added this flask that uh, just in case uh, uh, you couldn't finish your drink so you you could carry it with you uh, I'll, I'll get finish in the morning it's grumbling well we thank you and your employer for your for your hospitality and uh, Mar is going to give her uh yeah Mar is gonna and Mar is just gonna give her uh, uh five silver Uh, I do not understand. This is for free. You do not need to pay for this. I she know. kind of she kind of shies away. What what? She still doesn't understand what you're what you're trying to do. Uh Mar kind of like, uh, kind of like, uh, closes her hand around it. This is thanks. For doing a good job. It takes a while for her to process that. And she... After after a few minutes, she she timidly takes each pe each silver piece and puts it in her pocket and places the silver uh, plate onto one of the makeshift uh, table barrels right beside the door and uh, carefully closes the door, but is also kind of hastily trying to leave the room in uh, slight um, embarrassment and stuff like this. Dark, you did exactly what I was gonna do if I didn't have to roleplay being a drunk skunk right now. <laughs> so, after this, I'm assuming you're both going to take your rest now. Yeah. Oh, hold on a sec. Hi, baby. What you doing, puppy dog? How's my puppy dog? I'm back, and uh, mm. this is one of those days where our dog decided to do their job of guarding the place for once, and it's on the day where I don't want them to do it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you both uh, take uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat a comfortable rest uh, despite the fact that these beds were not made for your size and weight as a different uh, race that is new to this place but uh, you you do though suddenly get woken up uh, early in the morning by uh, unwanted uh, basically yeah un unwanted uh, some 
unwanted and noisy attention that's outside, ju just outside your room. As you both hear uh, an argument uh, happening outside. You specifically hear uh, uh, some items being broken and Mr. Pete shouting at probably whoever was breaking some things. And some uh, some screaming of uh, you could only guess as one of the employees. And since I don't have much prepared in the same map, you're gonna have to do combat with even you don't see it like theater of the mind. Great. Wait. What are they arguing about? Uh, actually, you just woke up and you're unsure because uh, if I put it this way, you'll you're still kind of groggy and the the reception area is actually or the main area is really far from your room, so it's really faint, especially when the door is closed. It's it's safe to say that Favit has a hangover this morning, right? <laughs> It definitely is. It that definitely have. That might affect his aim if anything happens. Um, right, maybe. Uh, I. All right, Mar is gonna get up and go over to the door and open it uh, to see if she can uh, see if she can get a uh, to see if she can hear better. And kind okay. of, uh, and kind As of you... get an idea what's going on. Okay. My, don't mind the background noise. Anyway. As you open the door and uh, I guess kind of poke your head out, kind of, uh, to hear better of what's going on outside, it, the voices echo in the hallways of the rooms. You hear uh, Mr. Pete and a different person arguing about uh, a protection fee of sorts. Where Mr. Pete, Mr. Pete hasn't uh, paid in the last few months, and if he doesn't, this entire place and the tavern next to it will be taken down both at the same time. Brick by brick and plank by plank. That is the threat. And they've already kind of started with, uh, as you hear, another uh, vase breaks. And with that, you also hear uh, a slightly scared and sobbing female voice from the same area. You could only assume a hostage. All right. David, uh, David says I am going to... Uh, I am going to, uh, as stealthily as I can. That means running uh, for stealth. Mm -hmm. Stealthily as you can. Uh, I am going to try to uh, to creep up on the the threatening voice. Like, uh, creep over to the, uh, the reception area and... You know what I mean, right? Okay, first you need to roll stuff. Okay, 16. With a 16, uh, you uh, quietly uh, and sneakily traverse the hallways without making a sound, so you would be able to attract any attention from the reception. And as you are about to uh, sneakily make your way through the reception, you notice... Oh, one second. Uh, yeah. You see the scenario. Uh, Mr. Pete is holding up both of his... He's holding up one arm, while his other arm is 
uh, behind Sorry about uh, that. his back. And Mr. Pete is actually holding a, uh, an elven dagger. Basically a dagger uh, different, differently, uh, crafted differently from how humans would. It has its own in- intricate designs and stuff. He's holding up his hand, and with the other hand behind his back, has a weapon. While uh, uh, three uh, three heavily armored and uh, face covered or hooded, uh, you could only assume to be men, is uh, is basically threatening him about what you've heard. Uh, one of them holding a piece of parchment, uh, probably a contract between them and him. And uh, the other one uh, holding Miriam uh, with a knife uh, pointing or basically right at her neck. And you hear the tallest of the group uh, speak up and say this. You know, Pete, we're good friends. We're just asking you to pay what you owe us for this monthly payment you haven't paid us for a while. Either that or you lose an employee. Now, and tomorrow you lose everything else. All right, so, uh... Uh... Am I, like... Oh, um... (laughs) First, I I do want to... I do want to say that, uh, I did grab my swords before I came down. Yep. That's fine. Sure. Uh, Because I, I never... I almost never go anywhere without taking them. Because you never know when you're gonna need something. And Favit has seen Mar grabbing her her swords, and uh, he, although groggy, he's he uh, he he knows probably something's up. So he's gonna grab his bow, some arrows, and his short swords. So is Favit also going to try and sneakily take an advantage? A very advantageous position against a. Uh... Will it require a stealth check to get into a, a position without them noticing because they're kind of distracted right now? Or... Yes. Okay. Yes, it would. All right then. Well, I have stealth plus two disadvantage. So... Ah. Mm. All I can say now is please don't roll lower than ten. All right. Well, I have to roll twice, I think. So. Uh, if you hold the, um, the control key, it will, uh, you should see the dice turn into a red negative. Oh, should I, I I just rolled twice, should I just, like, go with those results, or? I'm pretty sure the, that key is only something if you have the extension. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't have an extension. Okay, uh... Oh boy, you l- roll lower than a 10. A 5. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm assuming both of you went on separate ways. Going around. Uh, I'm assuming Mar took in like the fastest route to uh, easily maneuver towards the reception area. But Favid, as you move around, I'm assuming since you have a bow and arrow, you're going to take uh, a higher ground. So as you... as uh, as you do go up the stairs, you trip mm-hmm. on the last step before you reach the second floor. And since you are a huge person, unfortunately, with your hangover, that kind of shifts your focus. And you're also groggy. Yeah. Uh, your your coordination, your movements are still sloppy. So you trip on the last step, which. Uh, causes a huge thud which worries the uh, people by the door and uh, the tallest man says what the fuck Pete I thought there were no people here 
I thought you'd clear this place out. Do you have someone in here with uh, you? All right. Um, So at that, uh, Mar is going to to surge forward with her sword. And, uh, and, uh, place, uh, and kind of, like, put her sword, uh, against his neck. Right? Right, like, uh, like, you know, with the blade facing towards... Okay, uh, roll me... Roll me raw decks for how fast you could get there. You could get to him before he could react to you because he's also still distracted by... Ah, Mm. that one. Come Mm. on. You know what? I I don't want to be... I don't want to be unfair. This is just the start of your day. (laughs) Hmm. Oh, it's it's the start of our day, huh? Sure. Hey. I've got a massive lump in my head. (laughs) Uh, let me... Let me... Let me look into some things. Because this... This is it. This isn't meant to be the hardest part of your, of your, of this, of this one shot. Uh, well, the dice gods have determined that we are not going to have, uh, have a good time with this, apparently. Hmm. You know, it's fine. I didn't want this to go that way, but it did, so... As you try to charge in uh, and try to here's a question. Him here's a question. With a blade against his Here. throat. I have a question. I have a question, though. So, I'm coming from stealth. Yeah. So would that would that help me in any way, or that's that's what I was looking for. You know what? Fine. Roll again. <laughs> Basically, rolling with advantage. Just roll again. Don't you don't need to say. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so you come in from behind, and uh, I'm assuming you're targeting the guy that's been talking, the tallest one yeah. of them, which is still considerably smaller than you. Uh, and as he starts to question Pete further, and all of them uh, basically tense up. And the three, the other three, start looking about. None of them notice you, and you swiftly put your blade around or against the the leaders, or you could only assume to be the leader. Uh, the leaders. Uh, throat. Now I know you. Now I know you aren't threatening the nice man, right? Are you going? Is that an intimidation or? Oh hell yeah! Axe. Hang on. What? What is this guy like? A human or? Uh, as of now, it is actually you're unsure because from where you are, this guy is. You're looking at the person's back, and uh, he's cloaked. Okay. But you can tell you can tell his other the other one the other three are uh, if they're not half elves they're elves. Okay, so Okay, so we're talking one, like six foot at most. Yeah, six foot at most. And like, and uh, maybe two hundred pounds. At the uh, very, like, on the high end. 
I'd say about like a uh, hundred and forty-ish pounds. Where are you getting at? Are you going to suplex the guy? Or what? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just wondering how this guy is gonna is gonna react to this large seven foot tall dragon placing a blade against his throat. This seven foot tall dragonborn that has like two hundred pounds on him. <laughs> so, are you going to roll your intimidation? Uh oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I'm just, I was just curious as to how exactly. Yeah, he will react as soon as you roll your intimidation. That is a nineteen. Uh, uh, give me, give me a few moments here. Um, to be honest, I just rolled randomly on the random encounter table that I set up myself. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's a d20, by the way. So it's between this entire establishment burning down because of, uh, <laughs> un- of a fire accident or... Uh, a fight uh, happens on the other establishment that will uh, also require you. And you can only guess which one's a 1 and which one's a 20. (laughs) And those two scenarios. There was, like, there was actually one funny meme scenario that I added. Where suddenly there's a gelatinous cube inside the establishment. <laughs> the, the, the barmaid, the, uh, the, the, whoever's working in the, in the kitchen got the wrong kind of jello. Or this entire area is basically built on top of a slime chunk. JK, that's not Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, one of the one of the uh, one of the like yesterday I was rolling some dice to determine some reactions. One of the reactions I was gonna have if, if Mar was was pointing out like how how uh, how drunk Favid was was uh, especially after you said that his his cheeks were going red. I was like he was gonna be like, uh, Mike, I'm not drunk. This blush is for the barmaid. <laughs> I wonder how long Dark's gonna take trying to <laughs> I guess give Dax some attention. <laughs> Dax is a very needy puppy. Dax is a diva. Tell you what, if we had a dog at this house, it'd be interrupting everything. I mean, my dog isn't even in the house, but he's interrupting. <laughs> oh, I'm the only one without any pets. It seems everybody's got like five pets these days. Because apparently pets are better than antidepressants and better than human beings. So why not have five of them instead of five unruly roommates, right? Hey, they, they cost less. <laughs> Uh, no. that depends. The costing less that depends. Yeah. If you're like if you're like me, where the food I eat is also the same thing that my dog eats. Okay, how about this? It it might not cost less, but it's better value. Better value. Yeah, because you get free free therapy as somebody to just talk to. It's like, it, it, it may be an animal, and it can't talk back, but, like, we, we've all been there where we're, like, depressed, and we just talk to our pet. Just hug our pet and pet it and tell it all about our problems that it doesn't even understand. I feel like there's no difference between that and a therapist. Yeah, but, like, you know. Is Dark back? Therapist costs a hell of a lot of money. 
All right, so I just gotta quickly make uh, make supper. Okay. Yeah, this is really throwing me for a loop, not being able to see where I am on the map. Yeah, the yeah, I wish I could uh, I could have set up the the second establishment, but I didn't have enough time, and the only thing I could have set up was yeah, set I... up on time was the 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 crypt that you're going to enter. Yeah, I'm I'm constantly having to fight my perception that we're in the middle of the bar right now. I can cover it up for you. Don't worry about it. There we go. So, like, give me, give me, give me another, uh, another, another rundown of like the layout of the place. Like, we're we're on. I'm I'm assuming, I I, I assume we're on like a second floor. That's where our room is, right? Uh, actually, your room is on a hallway on the first floor, and the hallway leads to a second floor. So, uh, as you open the door, the first thing you will see is the reception area or the main area. There are a few seats there in front of the reception area, but besides the besides that large room, uh, there are two doors uh, behind the reception area. More like three, because the the third one is for the the person on the table on the counter. So the two doors lead to a hallway of rooms. And uh, the hallway of rooms converge into one staircase that leads up to a second floor, which is also uh, a hallway of rooms. This time, instead of uh, a, door, a door facing another door, it's more like a door facing the balcony for okay, on the second you've, floor. You've lost, which me, can... you've lost me near the beginning of all that because I'm trying to figure out how I trip down the stairs in that case. Ah, okay. Let me... Let me move your perspective into a different white map. <laughs> okay. I hope you see this. Uh, where's the free hand? I'm going to grab the black color and make it regular. So you enter the door, and yeah, okay, this, is, this is the room that you first see. Here's the desk, the reception desk. Here are chairs. And here are the two doors that lead further in. And here is a door that leads to the kitchen that connects to the other establishment. Uh, as you further, this, each door leads to a hallway. And uh, each hallway has a room that kind of uh, that has doors that face each other. But the layout of the path, basically this loops back to the other door. And there is a staircase uh, in, the in the converging path leading upwards. And that, that basically uh, leads either this way or the other way, but it's still upwards. You know okay, those grand, right. like, staircases? Alright, alright. All right. So you've got the two doors at the back with the kitchen door. Uh -huh. Are those lines that lead off of them hallways? Yes. Okay, they're just drawn like lines. <laughs> okay. There's not enough room if I make them, like, really big. Like, I've already exhausted the base of the map just by drawing, yeah, okay. trying to draw the first floor, so... Yeah, so let's just imagine these are staircases that, yeah, divide there. And since you did say that the two of you weren't uh, going the same path, I would be assuming that uh, Dark is actually uh, right here. Was right here. But with stealth, she was capable of uh, like going around and then behind the enemy. And then uh, you here tried to go to the second floor, but you tripped uh, right about here at the end of the staircase to the second floor, uh, right wing of uh, the set of rooms that have a balcony that can see uh, that can see down the hallway of uh, these rooms, and then they're separated by a wall. 
and then can say on the, separated by a wall that also has a door then another room that has that continues on basically the hallway that has another set of rooms this time the balcony can see through this area that's the entire stuff how that's how the entire establishment looks like okay so i'm going downstairs to go through a hallway to get to a balcony that overlooks the room that Dark's in right now. You're going upstairs to a balcony that can oversee, that can, yes. So basically what happened is I went up the stairs and then tripped down them. You went up the stairs and on the last step up, you tripped. So you're already on the second floor, but you tr you tripped on the oh, last step. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And then I've got to make my way through through a, a hallway to get to a balcony that overlooks Dark's room. Yep. Okay. All right, I get it now. So, like, even if your stealth was broken, uh, they they still they, wouldn't be able yeah, to they see don't, you. Yeah, they don't know where I'm at. Okay. They they know I'm near some stairs. I I assume that they may know the layout of the building since they're paid protection money and everything. But like. You said there's two staircases, so they don't know which one I'm at, or what I'm doing. Yep. Okay. Despite this being the second game you have outside of Dark. Dark's your first game, this this is your second game outside of hers. Despite this being your second game, I'm really impressed. I guess that's because you were playing as a character that you already know. Yeah, I mean, if I, if I had to ask about any other abilities, I'd be flooding you with questions. Honestly, I like, I, I, I enjoy keeping things simple so that I don't have to do that. <laughs> That's how most uh, that's how most new players go on about it. Actually, I mean to be honest, I'm fairly new. I'm like I'm only ahead of you by about probably a year or not. Yeah, I'm not I'm not organized of a person to be a DM. Like I just like oh no, I'm not even organized either. <laughs> I'm not organized either. If I was an organized DM, I would have done better homebrew, but, you know. No, like, I'm not good at, like, thinking up things and scenarios and things like that. I just... Ah, uh, yes. I don't, the... I don't think I could keep all that together consistently. Ah, uh, yes. The perks of being... being... having the imagination of a child. How, how old are you, Hex? I'm 20. Uh, then we're not far far off. You're like twenty years ahead of me. <laughs> I'm eighteen, my guy, and I'm I still act childishly, and that's why oh, I have see. the imagination of a three three year old that I can basically just describe normally like an adult. Same, like academically, like I was like ahead of my age, but like maturatively and like uh, you know growing up, critical thinking, all that, I'm definitely behind my age. You'd probably be able to DM, but not the uh, but not at the extent of DMing that, uh, I guess, a dark does or I do. That 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 makes it sound like I'm giving myself too much credit. Because <laughs> like I have no basis on what I'm doing. This, oh, oh yeah, that would be really awesome to have this. And I start on that. I'm not going to look at any book for reference. If I'm stuck on something, then I look for references. Because most DMs, if I, remember, if I recall correctly, the books that uh, has already a written story in it, to them are just inspirations and guidelines for their homebrew. But I never once experienced any of it. I I originally made my first uh, world, and I haven't actually read any stories 
through the eyes as a DM, through the eyes of a DM. I've only experienced them as players. The stories of Dragon of the Iron Spire Peak, Storm King's Thunder, Curse of Strahd. I'm currently though I'm currently going through Curse of Strahd. Like, the only I, inspiration I, guess... I get from those games are like, oh yeah, I want to replicate this feeling for my players when I play the game. When I make the game for them. And that's it. Yeah, like, no technical layout, no balancing of creatures, even though balancing is a, a subjective term. Yeah, I'd definitely be the kind of DM that says, if you, if you roll badly, you're dead. Like I, I can't, I can't like bullshit my way into saying you survive. <laughs> like I, I know Dark like does everything in her power to keep people from from uh, from from dying. Like to to like being like unlucky. But like for me, it's like I mean, you know, you took that risk. You're dead. Uh, that's my that's a, that's similar to my standpoint too. Like if I've uh, if the description of the thing is uh, no no shit absolutely will kill you if you tried it, and if you did try it, then if you fail on whatever you're trying to do with it, uh, that is uh, your death sentence that you just signed. Like I, I probably wouldn't like make an encounter that's like unfair and like i try to like give some advantages in terms of like you know like uh making the monsters or whatever they're fighting do not optimal things i don't know the, the monster combat isn't i don't make the uh, the monst the monsters in combat go outright be smart about it because if i were to be smart with combat with monsters that would uh, absolutely annihilate my players <laughs> uh, what I'm talking about is when there are things set up like uh, let's say there is an artifact in this room and it is the fabled artifact uh, it is a fabled artifact that uh, basically amplifies magic within a certain range from it. And let's say the group decides to destroy the artifact so no one can use no one can use it for evil. And then they decided to cast fireball at this thing. Even though you specifically stated that that object or that artifact will amplify any magic within a certain range from it tenfold. Imagine Fireball expanding at, as the size of an entire town. <laughs> and everyone within, inside a room. Because they overlooked that one specific detail that I already warned them that this thing doesn't, uh, doesn't discern, doesn't, dis doesn't basically pick and choose. Whatever magic comes into contact on its range will be amplified tenfold. Okay. If it's stupidity that causes their death, then sorry, that is how you die. That's, it? That's how I do it. Uh, I'm being called. Hold on a sec. Lay down. Down. Boy. All right, I'm back. And Ace just left. So now we wait on him.
I, 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 I was talking to Ace and I was like, you know, I think, I think it was him that said it originally, but I was agreeing with him like, yeah, dogs are much more effective antidepressants than medication. Oh, you're not wrong. And, and like, it's, the, it's, it's, it's up in the air whether or not they cost less than, than, like, the medication, but, like, I, I, I think you can definitely say there's more value for your money. I can, yeah, I, I can agree with you there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna head out for, for a sec, uh, Dark, keep the recording entertained. Or, or both of you, I guess. <laughs> Jeez, one, one after another of us are leaving for something. I, I'll be right back in like 40 seconds, I promise. 40 <laughs> seconds, okay. I could try to draw a quick layout of the entire thing if you want. I mean, we got time. I mean, I already started, like, making a rough sketch because, uh, uh, apparently Hex, uh, couldn't keep up with my descriptions on just a theater of the mind, so I had to, uh, make yeah, sure for, he for understood combat, his position. combat theater of the mind is definitely a lot more difficult. Okay. Yeah, well, I think I it's not it. that time frame. Alright, I'm back. You can go back to the, uh, to the app again, I guess. I'm actually, actually going to try and draw everything. Yeah, it might actually be better if you do that. Hold on. <laughs> Let me put on my Bob Ross Afro Afro prop. <laughs> Just because. Mm, yes. That definitely is a straight line. Hmm, hmm. Great. If you're going to ask, these are chairs, by the way. Yes, they're the best chairs ever. <laughs> Gosh, that looks, is so, that looks so darn comfortable to sit in. Who is this? Who is with us today? I cannot check. I have screen recording. Oh, Shadow? On. Yeah? Yep. yep. Man, if only I if only I decided to uh for one day uh, avoid all of my schoolwork so I could make this map on uh dungeon draft. But no, I decided to be a good student. Oh, that's important, isn't it? Partially. This is definitely better than when I drew in my third grade. And that says a lot. What the fuck's on top of what? Oh, what the fuck? 
Yeah. Yep. Just puppy being puppy. Can we all just like start a religion around puppies? Oh god. Yes. Yes. Not not like some super crazy cult thing or anything, but like just like dedicating shrines to like uh, adorable puppies where you where you just go and just look at like cute pictures of puppies around like like lovely uh, candles and setups and like that. That sounds ridiculously wholesome, and I love it. See, all I have are cats, and they're not even in my house, so you know, I don't, I don't get, I don't get the, uh, the, the, the warm, fuzzy feelings that come with having a, a, a puppy in the nearby vicinity. <laughs> Hold on a sec as I spawn in sprites on this very artistic fully made map. <laughs> Gosh, didn't... Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Did Picasso draw this thing? Jeez, this is amazing. <laughs> oh man, this is my worst nightmare come true. Would it, wouldn't, it be, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be funny if like the uh the the Indian belief of reincarnation is true and we're actually the the alternate personalities or not not alternate personalities but we're the reincarnations of like dead famous people and we just don't know it. <laughs> oh God, I hope not. I'll be disappointing the the person who got reincarnated to be me. <laughs> I'll be disappointing that person, whoever they may be. Did I? Can I not select these things? The fuck did I do to my drawings? I don't. I don't know. Oh. Um, I don't. I don't know enough about like, uh, the uh, the the Hindu culture and all that to know. Uh, to know like what kind of karma do you have to have to be reincarnated as a human? Is it like zero, like, like completely neutral karma, or? Don't ask me. I, ma I imagine it wouldn't be on the on the low end of the scale, because I think that's like being reincarnated as like insects and things like that. Roll twenty is not on my side today. There we go. So as you can see. <laughs> The circle is represented to be, uh, I guess, the tallest uh, person on uh, the four men group, and there's uh, a slight, uh, the two smallest ones are represented by a smaller square and a triangle, and the second to the biggest person in, in, the, in the group for, is uh, currently holding Mir Miriam as hostage, and Morris uh, behind the Mars behind the, I guess, the de facto leader, assumed. And Favid is uh, right there on the second floor, uh, step uh, on his face. How, how fast, uh, in terms of picking myself up off the, off the uh, cold wooden floor, would I be able to get to the, uh, the balcony about there? I, I can't make the... Yeah, how fast would it take me to get to the balcony overlooking the the place? 
I mean, you're not in combat yet, so I can say, like, you can fairly get there, but if you're going to get there without stealthing, they'll be actively capable. They'll be capable of seeing uh, before you could position yourself properly. We will think, be rolling initiative. I th I think it would be important to get. I I think it's actually better if they maybe do see me. That way, they know there's more than just one person. Because if they know there's more than one person, there's somebody with an arrow trained on whoever's about to try to free the, the guy from Mar. You know, they're even less likely to do something funny. With a disadvantageous position and putting Dark at risk between, uh, like, three people on the map, I don't know. I don't know either. I'm trying to sound smart, but I'm not. <laughs> The best, the best you could do is roll stealth and start a fight with a surprise attack from the balcony. Oh boy, we know how, how well this goes. Alright, disadvantage stealth, let's go. Uh, that's okay. That's okay, 15. Okay. Uh, with a 15, uh, no problem. You pick yourself up and you start to uh, steadily make your way through the entire hall. I'll just move your token for you. Yeah. yeah. And as you face the, the door on the, the wall that separates uh, the innermost room from the from this side, uh, you gently, basically, uh, push the door open, and you know, basically just trying to avoid uh, the creaking sound of most uh, of most of these door the most of these doors make, and uh, you safely uh, and uh, steadily and sneakily uh, go through. Uh, they don't notice you yet because their attention is uh, halved between uh, the leader and their and Mar and, and the dragonborn Pete. that is now holding a sword to his throat so will you be taking a shot hmm can Mar see me uh I would say at the point where you both left your room, I'm, I'm assuming you both have an understanding of what you're going to do. So I could only assume that Mar knows where you are, relatively. Or at least has a has like a very good idea of which direction he's in. Well, I'm I'm asking like if she can like see me, because like if if she can see me, she can give me a signal of whether she wants me to do something. Uh, if she does, if she is active look actively looking at you, her focus will be shifting from the main target at her hand and for looking for you. So okay. I don't, I think that wouldn't be a good idea. Yeah. Uh... Okay. I would know that he that he is here. Yeah. So you could basically just uh, shout now, and that would signal something. I think he's going to knock an arrow. Uh, would, would a line of fire on the guy holding Miriam, like, put her in danger? Or Yes, like... if you miss. Ah. Uh, well, I mean, if you miss this instead guy, of... shooting at this guy is going to require me to shoot through Miriam. Shooting at this guy also would probably have a chance of that hurting somebody. Actually, uh, from where you are, you wouldn't be to shoot past them because every time you move uh, farther away, far farther a target, a target farther away from the other, it's more like their arrow will be shooting above the other person's head, not through them. Ah, uh, okay. You know, triangulation and shit. Yeah, I guess. So. That guy then, the the one holding Miriam. I'm gonna aim okay. for him. If you're rolled lower than a twelve, you will be hitting Miriam. Oh shit. 
Oh, what is my, uh, what is my... Well, because it's a surprise attack, you would have advantage, Hex. I would. I'm also trying to look at my features to make sure what I have is what I... Uh, Archer, you gain a plus two bonus to attack rolls you make with ranged weapons. Okay. Go on ahead. So, plus two in advantage. Okay, uh, let's see. Gain the longbow attack. Hit is plus seven. All right. So that's a total of a plus 20 nine. Cent, so that's a nat 20. I got a nat 20. Nice. That's a 27. A nat 20 and a, uh, roll me your damage. That's an instant crit, by the way. And everyone also roll me initiative. 2d8 plus 2. Uh, that's uh, 8. And then initiative is... Can you double another the Another nat 20. <laughs> Wait, and what you doubled happened? your damage, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Eight. I thought it, like, auto did. Yeah, it rolled 2d8 plus 2. Okay. Because my normal damage is 1d8 plus 2. Also, <laughs> I, I got a nad 20 on initiative, also. Oh, isn't come on! D we both rolled isn't, nad 20s. <laughs> isn't 2d8 uh, the basic damage of your. No, it says my longbow damage is 1d8 plus 2. Ah, oh, so with a crit, you just dealt an, an, an 8. Yeah. That's kind of sad. Yeah, I rolled a 1 and a 5. Uh, what is Favid's? Uh, my, mine is a 22. So, uh, I rolled a nat 20 as well. Add turn, 22. And I will be adding... Uh... I'm just going to mim the meme their fucking names. Thug tree. It's a triangle, I assume. For the for the square one, name him Thug Enix. No. Aww. And then I'll be rolling twenties. Uh... Man, I hate how roll twenty is really not a. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> mm hmm. Okay, that's one. Two, three, four. Okay. Oh gosh, roll twenty. Why are you like? Pete rolled a 22. Miriam rolled a 17. Jesus Christ. For ties, whoever's dex is higher. What is your dex, uh, favorite? Uh, my dex is plus two. Ah, uh, yeah, Miriam's going first. Oh, wait, no, not Miriam, um, Pete, I mean. Okay. Why is roll 20 so slow? 
It's because you do not yet have the power. I like how the is music kicked. I like how the music kicked in just as I said that. <laughs> is this just about right? Is no one getting ear raped? Uh, no, I think that's fine. Okay, so you attacked uh, this man right here, the one horse. Uh, Actually, that might be a little loud. Hold on. According the person to holding side. on to uh, Miriam, and I need to record this. Yep, I definitely do. Hold on. <laughs> I need to write it down. Yep, yep, we're doing a one shot. I always forget someone is with us. <laughs> we should have explained. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> there we go. Works. Uh, there's a lot of things I need to set up. Oh boy. Don't mind the elephant. <laughs> it, that's definitely not an elephant. Okay. So, uh, your arrow critically, uh, favorite arrow critically hits the, uh, the thug that's holding on to Miriam, and they receive a total of eight points of, uh, damage. So, I, uh, I, I, I guess I, I took off his finger, probably. Uh, you. Uh, shot him on his shoulder, and that gives uh, Miriam a chance to basically you run away from him. As besides getting shot, he actually uh, the the, poor, the thug also gets taken aback by the force of the arrow, and Miriam uh, runs over to the counter and grabs and whatever sort of blunt object there is. And the first thing she grabs is a broken uh, table leg. And she is going to, I guess, help or assist Mr. Pete in the fight. And uh, top of the round, Mar. I'm, I'm just waiting for, for Miriam to get a critical hit with a table leg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am going to attack. Uh, uh, I am going to hit the uh the person uh uh. 
Uh, the person uh, just to uh, to the right of the leader there. Or the left, rather. Okay. Should probably change my, my color because the background is white. And... Boop! Okay. Why is there a plus six? I got a crit. Oh, that's oh, I just saw it. that's a twenty-seven. <laughs> oh boy. That's not even with my sneak attack. Oh, that was a it shitty sneak attack. Can you sneak attack if there is multiple around you as a swashbuckler? I'm pretty sure there's all there's specific rules to it that you cannot sneak a, deal additional sneak attack damage if there's more than one enemy is within five feet of you. That's 13. Holy shit. <laughs> Slim Shady is down half his health. <laughs> <laughs> is that really what you call him? I call him Slim Shady because <laughs> he's a very slim square. <laughs> and almost a rectangle, but it's a square. <laughs> You should have called him Thug Hip. And, uh, it, you should have called him Thug Hip because it's hip to be square. Uh, and there's my uh, bonus action. Mm -hmm. Bonus action, and that would be hitting who? Uh, Are we... I'm going to uh, to hit the guy to uh, to the leader's left with. Uh, uh, with my one short sword, and uh, the one that is uh, that is against the leader's neck, uh, I am going to uh, to draw like across his chest, like the point of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that the the second short sword is to the leader, mm -hmm. and. Yep, you have successfully damaged them both. Yeah, so I, like, just stab the first guy, like, in the shoulder or something. And then... And then, like, just... Barely. And then kind of, like, warning shot the, the leader. Almost. If that is all, I will be considering this the end of your turn. Ah... Uh... Yes, that is the end of my Okay, it is now Mr. Pete's turn. And uh, taking advantage of uh, you guys helping, uh, Pete will reveal the weapon behind him. And he throws the elven dagger towards uh, uh, the triangle. <laughs> or the thug to the right of the leader. And as he does... Uh, those of you who are experienced in combat notice this, and that means I'm only speaking of Favid and Mar. Uh, a slightly, a very thin and almost, almost translucent or uh, hard to see string is attached to the dagger, and as it, I'm going to roll for this to make sure, or at least know whether or not it hits. It does hit. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that hits. <laughs> that hits, and uh, as it lands to, as it lands on the jugular of the uh, thug to the right, he quickly pulls it. 
And I'll be rolling dice damage. Seven points of damage. And as Mr. P, like I said, throws the dagger, he pulls onto the air as people would see, as normal people could see. But you know, both know that a very thin strand uh, is connected to the dagger. And as he pulls it back, uh, it severely damages the thug to the right. Uh, it severely damages the jugular of the thug to the right of the boss. And uh, he starts basically kind of coughing up and uh, slowly, uh, I guess, drowning of his own blood as Pete struck a nerve. Favorite, it's your turn. Oh boy, you know this man's about to get another arrow. Except it's a nat one. Oh wait, no, that's a seven. Okay. Thank God. It's a 14. I thought that was a nat one for a second. I was about to be up really, really scared. Okay, 14 right. to hit. I'm assuming you're trying to hit the same one that was yep. holding on to... Uh, yep, that hits. Wait, he's hold on. To, he's, he's Actually, to... let me recheck. Never mind, that's a miss. Uh, you were missing, like, two points. <laughs> uh, why can't I be as effective as Mar? <laughs> as you shoot another arrow, it uh, darts uh, past... Uh, the the thug uh, closest to you and shoots uh, it basically hits the floorboards can we at least say it it goes past him and like hits the guy that's already dying so it's like, uh, not important uh no oh, i man. cannot do that i don't want to look okay fine <laughs> anything else what do i have a bonus action can i take another shot i don't think i can what is your class it's a ranger. Wait, you're a ranger. Okay. If you're yes. a level 5 ranger, you should have extra attack. Yeah, don't you have extra attack? Oh, I didn't know that. I would have attacked twice on my initial thing. Yeah, I didn't. I forgot about it. I was like, what is his class? I forget. I forgot to ask. Okay, well, alright. So, I'll attack him. I won't ask for that other attack back. and spin. Yeah. Well, okay, it didn't even matter. Okay, it's now the thug leader's turn, and uh, uh, after getting uh, a warning stab from Mar, uh, the leader will face Mar and will attempt to attack Mar. As uh, the leader pulls out a uh, longsword and tries to attack Mar with both hands, which misses. And that's the end of the thug leader's turn. It's now Miriam's turn, and revenge to obviously being hostage and also. Uh, some sort of assault in in being a hostage. She's going to charge in and smack the shit out of this person with a table leg. And that's a 16 to hit, which hits. How is Miriam more effective than me? Fuck, dude. And the table leg is uh, something equivalent of a mace, so... Uh, See, much damage that's as seven points of bludgeoning damage to that thug. <laughs> the 
don't mind the elephant outside my house. Uh, yep, uh, the thug is down one digit. And that's the end of uh, Miriam's turn. Uh, the thug right here, uh, the triangle, will be receiving... three points of damage to itself as they bleed out from their jugular and slightly drown <laughs> and uh, try to advance uh, towards Pete attack of opportunity from Miriam That's a miss. And the tug will try and attack Pete with a dagger. Stabity stab stab stab. That hits. Okay, Pete will be receiving five points of piercing damage. Okay. As, as the tug pulls out their knife, they stab Pete onto their side, to his side, and that's it of that one's turn. And what the fuck? Who's this one? That's that's the square. Oh yeah, Slim Shady. <laughs> uh. Okay, since uh yeah, Mar attacked him, uh, they will try and return the favor. A that 16 hit. a hit. Okay, that's nope, a miss. Nope, that does not hit, actually. I'm just gonna sidestep it. Sadly for you, Slim Shady also has two daggers. So... Nope. Wow, and both of them miss. Lol. And I guess that's the end of Slim Shady's turn. And th this thug right here is going to attack uh, Miriam as he pulls out a longsword, which actually hits Miriam. And is going to attack Miriam for. Add deal damage to Ethereum for about. Oh dear. Okay, you see this happen in front of the three of you, including Pete. As uh, this thug pulls out a longsword, he swiftly slashes across Miriam's chest, and Miriam falls to the floor. Is she dead? You're not quite sure. But from that one attack, she she drops. Mar, it's your turn. I wouldn't be able to cast shield. So you wanted to cast shield for Miriam? Yes. I wouldn't be able to, but I I can't do that, can I? 
That's a reaction, and its condition is when a creature is about to attack you. Yeah. Oh, you have healing spells, right? Yes, I do. Okay. That's what I was planning to do. I need to investigate if she's dead first, though. <laughs> My turn isn't here yet. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, do do do. All right, I am going to move around here. That's an attack of opportunity. Okay. But you have 17 AC. You'll be fought. Oh. It hits. That's the first. That's that's just one attack from Slim Shady. There's, a, there's one dagger, which deals seven points of damage. All right, and uh, that guy there. Mm -hmm. is getting electrocuted. Okay, that definitely hits. And if I'm if I'm I'm certain shocking grasp uh, removes the ability of whoever gets tased uh, to react to you, right? Uh, let's see. Um. Uh, yes. On hit, the target takes uh lightning da takes whatever d8 lightning damage and it can't take reactions until the start of its next turn actually scratch that tell me how it dies <laughs> i just looked at its health so um so Turns what everyone ash. sees is mar uh kind of dance around the leader uh Uh, briefly hold this guy's, like, the back of this guy's shoulder, like, just kind of presses her hand there. And he, and you know, like, the, the cartoon, someone gets electrocuted? Mm-hmm. Uh, he just, like, starts completely, uh, like, twitching. As he's just electrocuted. Yep, you see, <laughs> you see the '90s type of cartoons reaction of him <laughs> ele elevating into the air and his bones getting highlighted. Yes, yes. And he drops to uh, to the floor, charred. I'm assuming that's the end of your turn. Uh, for bonus action to the, uh, to the leader, I am going to 
ปุ๊บเว้ยเธอฟังเธอสมัครโอเคเฟย์ทัชด์เอาล่ะเฮ้ยก็ a bunch of annoy bunch of annoying mystical fey looking dragon illusions appear on on top of the on top of the uh, leader's head and each of them holding uh, a specific uh, type of weapon uh, one holds a bludgeoning one holds a piercing and one holds a slashing type weapon and they're basically just marching around his head. <laughs> and is kind of distracting him, even though he's he's more focused on you. So I'm assuming that's the end of your turn. Yep, that's the end of my turn. Uh, it is now Pete's turn, and Pete is quickly going to. Uh, Pete is first going to. Go around his enemy uh, to go to uh, Miriam, and he's going to grab a flask from his pocket and uh, basically drop, just drop like a single droplet of whatever was inside of the flask onto Miriam's uh, mouth, and. Light glows from Miriam's uh, wounded chest, and it slowly heals. After uh, after Miriam uh, slowly, after Miriam's uh, big uh, gashing wound slowly heals, uh, Pete wraps her up with his cloak because not only is the flesh. Uh, Of a human being destroyed on the process of being hit by a fucking sword, so were their clothing. So he he basically gives her or puts the cloak on on her. So uh, at least you know, being a gentleman about it, save the dignity of the person. And uh, Pete and his ends his turn. David, it's now your turn. Oh, David, feeling absolutely cucked of everything he wanted to do. <laughs> well, now I don't know what to do. Uh, I, uh, I guess I'll do the only thing I'm really not even good at is shoot things. Okay, at 19, I'm I'm slightly okay at shooting things. I'm aiming for this guy. Don't let him attack Pete in the back. Okay, roll damage. Nine. Nice. Let me see. Yep. Tell me how this one dies. Arrow through the throat. Arrow through the throat. Come on. So oh, fine. All right. <laughs> yes. Oh, come on. You got to admit that's pro. That's one of the most badass things. No, no, no. You can he do gets, it as an archer. No, 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 no. He gets one through the testicles. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Ow. That hurt me. Okay, without a... As you shoot the man in his family jewels, he tries to <laughs> scream, but that only hastens his own way of death through drowning in his own uh, bleeding jugular. So... He dies. He died bleeding in both heads, I guess. <laughs> yes. My man just got completely humiliated and stuffed. Okay, in I feel happy injury. now. I feel happy now. Uh, you still have another attack. Oh, I do. Um. Okay. Does rolling an investigation take up that that uh, other action, or? Uh, once you take an action to attack, you have to roll twice. To okay. 
to roll for investigation is something I do not consider as a free action. All right, then. Uh, gonna take the the head off the serpent. Then. Come on, hit again. Ooh, that's a not nat twenty. That's 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 twenty. Oh, that hits definitely. Roll damage. Unfortunately, it does four. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming you're trying to hit the boss. Yep. Yep. Uh, the boss is severely wounded and is below half his health. Oh wait, doesn't he, have, doesn't he have Hunter's Mark? Does that mean that I get like extra damage on that? Uh, I think Hunter's Mark only works for the caster. Ah, uh, damn. I should have done that beforehand. I, I took that spell to do that with. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's now the thug leader's turn, uh, being pierced on his chest by a short. I'm assuming it was a short sword. Was it a short sword? Yeah, I think it was a short sword, and then an arrow. Uh, uh, he's going to be to put all his strength into his long sword and try to hit Mar, hopefully with. Two hands on his weapon. It hits. 22 hits. And Mar will be receiving... Oh, that's actually one point away from critting. Uh, Mar receives... Nine points of slashing damage. And uh, now it is actually... Miriam's turn, and she actually got healed by whatever uh, was administered to her. And uh, she stands up, uh, fixes, herself, fixes herself up, and uh, uh, wraps up her chest with a cloak. And uh, actually tries to grab the longsword from the man who uh, tried to take her as hostage and is uh, going to drag it across the floor and uh, use uh, use its weight against uh, the person in front of her. Which is a miss. Wait, hold on. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's a d20. It misses. This thug is dead. Okay, Slim Shady's turn. What? Slim Shady will be uh, leaving the boss to go towards uh, Pete and will be trying to attack Pete twice with two daggers. Are you sure he's not going to try to cause 1d10 emotional damage by destroying him in a rap battle? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which actually, both actually hits against Pete. And I'm just really hoping that Pete doesn't go down. Oh, fuck. Uh-oh. That's exactly it. <laughs> exact amount of damage. Pete is down. Uh, why is roll 20 so slow? Yikes. That's the end of Slim Shady's turn. And uh, this one's dead. Mar, it's your turn. Alright. So, uh... Just gonna move around this way. So, uh, that it that guy's very near dead, right? Uh, actually, no. Slim is just, uh, half his health. Okay. Uh, and this guy is about half, you said, yeah? A little bit uh, less than Below half, half yeah. A little bit less than half. Well, uh, to the... Ouch, Daxter. To the guy, uh... 
don't kill them both at once. Let me have a story moment, please. <laughs> wow, imagine the rogue taking a spotlight from the ranger. Oh. Imagine the rogue taking the spotlight from the ranger. And hedging the person who knows how to play the game completely trolling on the newbie. I mean, it's not based on an, a uh, veteran versus newbie. This is all still based on dice rolls. Oh, yeah, but she has pluses on, like, everything. <laughs> no, not really. I don't You're, have anything you that's both plus have... 10. The closest thing I have is plus 7 to something. That's the she highest doesn't plus have I have. A plus 10. Yeah, she does. She had a plus 10 to something. I think she had a plus 10 to stealth. <laughs> What's he? She I doesn't have. I remember this. Are you, are you are you gaslighting me right now? <laughs> Is the DM gaslighting me? <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you talking about? She has about? a plus six to hit. Wait, that's a spell. Hold on. <laughs> Short swords has a plus seven, similar to you. Uh, it's... Oh wait, how is your longbow a plus two? What? What do you mean it's a plus two? It's it's plus seven to hit. Oh, that's damage. I'm stupid. Yeah, that's that's piercing damage. <laughs> yeah, Mar, what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, what what were you talking about for pluses uh, and? Ah, uh, nothing. Just go ahead. Hex is slowly going down depression because apparently he's not helping much in the fight. All right. Uh, yeah. The guy in uh, the guy in front of me is getting attacked. Uh, the boss or okay, that hits. Who are you hitting? Boss, dude. Okay. Hunter's mark. Okay. Sneak attack. Stop, stop. They're already dead. <laughs> <laughs> like quite seriously, you with just with just the hunter's mark that actually ended him exactly 12 HP. Okay. So, tell me how they die. All right. Uh, I am going to. Uh, I'm just gonna stab him in the chest, just like twist it, just twist my sword like just the slightest bit, you know, and then pull it out. Okay. As you you stab the leader deep into his chest, you hit. You hit his heart, and as you twist your short sword deeper in, uh, it basically you basically like destroy uh, his heart. And as you pull out, he falls. All right, oh, and then I felt that pain this morning. <laughs> and then to this guy, uh. Stop, stop, you, you have two bonus actions. Uh, you could either move your hunter's mark or you could attack him with your short sword. Alright, so uh, can I... Uh, can I take... Like, uh, put that guy on the ground? Like, take his feet out from under him or something? Okay, so I guess that's a different... I guess something different from my shove, but also something similar. So yeah, roll, roll me, roll me athletics. Oh boy. Sure, I couldn't use acrobatics. Acrobatics is more like dodging out of the way or escaping. Acrobatics feels more like parkour. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I they're was going to try and, like, you know, going quickly to sweep. take his feet out from under him. Yeah, you're going to basically, like, sweep his legs. So he's, he goes out balance and fall prone. That's using just one leg and full brute force kick him from under to make him fall. Fair enough. All right. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me! <laughs> Holy shit, and that one. Yeah, you try to you try to basically you trip you okay. trip yourself. No, okay, okay. No, okay. So the dice was on like like directly on to where it was like balancing on its side between the 1 and the 19. And it dropped to a one. No, it stayed there and and was like flickering for for a second before staying. <laughs> and like both were lit up. What the fuck? Okay, I'll give you a benefit of a doubt and roll again. That's good enough. Uh, yeah. Uh, slim Shady fall pro falls prone. Alright. And so I'm going to, uh, to uh, take the other sword that I have and like... Uh, uh, I'm going to point it at his throat uh, as I'm pinning him down. Uh, like... Just putting uh, pressure on his chest with my foot. Like, keeping him down, you know what I mean? Okay. Because I'd like to see him try to move me. Uh, and I'm assuming that will be the end of your turn. Uh, yeah, and I'm pointing the uh, the tip of my sword at his throat. Uh. And it will be Pete's turn, and Pete's Pete unconscious. is unconscious. I'll be rolling dice for Pete. Okay. David, it's your turn. Well, okay, let me measure this. He's 40 feet away. That's within range. I'm using a uh, healing spirit on him. Which is a bonus action. Okay. Uh, Roll your healing. Six. As I try to draw a spirit, <laughs> let me draw a Pac-Man ghost. <laughs> there we go. Six points of healing, and Pete is alive. You can thank me with a shot later! <laughs> and uh, I think he's going to... Because I've used my bonus action, do I still... Do I only have one attack now? No. Uh, that's not how that works. Okay. You still get to attack twice. Well, I'm debating if I should give, like, Miriam the chance to have a killing blow. <laughs> Just because that would, that would be, like, so fitting. Yeah, you know what? He's he's going to descend from the, uh, from the balcony. As safely as possible. Wait, descend from the balcony? Yeah. You're gonna descend on from a ten foot drop? Okay. Uh he's well, seven gonna... feet. Yeah, but still roll my acrobatics. Oh god, do I have any acrobatics? I have plus two. 
That's a 20. Okay. Yeah, much like how uh, how it's like living in the mountains. This is nothing different uh, to a Goliath. And you drop down as if you drop down from a normal ledge. Come on, Miriam, do it. This guy is dead, and uh, Miriam's turn. Miriam will try to deal uh, the killing blow. Uh, before she does, uh, Mar is just going to say, uh, uh, wait one moment. And uh, <laughs> she then uh, addresses the, the guy there. Tell me. Is there anyone you work for other than that other than that guy over there? As she kind of gestures to the uh to the guy who has a uh, huge hole in his chest. And uh the thug uh basically drags the the mask that's covering ha the lower half of his face down and uh now you see the full face of this half elven uh male and you hear him say <coughs> wouldn't you like to know adventurer still trying to like act like he's unfazed by this entire play this entire situation that he's in I would suggest you start being more cooperative. It's amazing how much the human body can take before it dies. Oh, I'm far beyond and far ahead of you. And before you before you could add a single word after that respond to him, he grabs a scroll and activates the spell. And the the ma the the male half elf under your foot instantly dries up as blood and water from his body basically just disappears out of nowhere. He casted blight on himself. Mar uh, just kind of uh, uh, just kind of looks where the guy was, a little bit uh, a little bit stunned. Well, I guess that takes care of that. Since we're out of initiative, can I have like a, an action to do? What? Oh, I just. I had something I wanted to do as soon as the fight was over. Yeah, yeah. You, you can okay. freely do whatever now. You're out of combat. Alright, let's see. I want to cast uh, Cure Wounds on Mar. Uh, please approach the token. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, hold on, let me choose my move thing. This doesn't matter how I do it. Yeah. And... Let's do that slot. Five. Mar heals for five. How about the spirit? Oh, am I gonna roll that again? Okay. Uh, As Pete uh, slowly moves up and uh, four uh, cuffs up uh, a bit, and uh, you see the two uh, stab wounds on his chest like uh, slowly heal up from your spell. Uh, how much? Uh, I said four. Okay, and yeah, uh, uh oh, thank you so much. Oh, man, finally, that's someone. all right. Yeah, we uh, don't mind me. 
Miriam, are you all right? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess. I'm all right. She's still clutching onto the sword. David and, smiles. Uh, and her oh. eyes is actually, instead of looking to you guys while talking, she's still looking at the guy that had her as hostage. David smiles, trying to be a bit comforting to her, and says, Well, you're safe now. And uh, if I may say so, you handled yourself quite well. Oh, uh, well. Uh, uh, Pete uh, cuts into the tear sentence and says, Oh, well, this isn't really new. There, there's, there's another problem in this town that I guess I would have loved uh, to have help with. If you notice, there were guards in the other establishment. That was because uh, there was a noble in the place. And those guards were customarily uh, only uh, assigned to protect him. And because of so, uh, these men didn't enter the establishment. Instead, they came in here. Uh, they're, they're another problem. They're like uh, the mafioso or mafioso of the, this area. They, they claim to be the ones that started this village and have been keeping this entire place safe. Even though they, don't, they themselves don't actually live nearby, they're really far away. Uh, but that's uh, something else to worry about. I'm just glad that for this, for the meantime, we have uh, uh, no one to worry about for, for a while. Hmm. Now, if, if if you don't mind, well, um, Miriam and I are gonna get ourselves uh, patched up. I guess, uh, especially in our clothes. David uh, takes a little bit of a uh, pity and says, you need any help cleaning up the place? Seem to have done a number. Uh, no, no. It's fine. As you can see, business is booming, so nothing a few hundred gold pieces can't fix. And they go on and continue uh, going to uh, going through the kitchen door. But uh, after opening the door, uh, Pete, uh, instead of going straight forward, Pete looks like he goes uh, like slightly uh, to the left of the room and disappears from sight. And Miriam follows and goes to. Did I say left? I meant Pete went right and Miriam went left. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> if I recall correctly, healing spirit lasts for only a minute. Uh, yeah, I was going to say uh, uh, as, as soon as possible, Favored kind of uh, nudges his mind and says, if the, the rest of those scratches are bothering you, you can use that as well. Uh, yeah, I might as well go over to that go over to the the healing spirit and use it it you it doesn't make sense to like wait it makes no sense to not you know what i mean you also yep. forgot uh, to add the five to your thing though you may not need to uh let's see let me roll this oh uh, no that, the token's not connected to uh oh, so. your website that's why i have to manually set that in oh uh, she'll get another three she'll get another three and she's full which health. yep that's perfectly back to full health And your healing spirit, after it gives uh, its final uh, few hit points to spare, it slowly dissolves in the air. David, uh, David looks around, takes out his uh, his flask, and says, "Well, nothing, uh, nothing uh, washes down a good battle like a good drink." <laughs> <laughs> the DC 12 can't save. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Mar is going to stop. That's a fail. <laughs> Mar is gonna stop Favid from uh, from having a drink. Actually, okay, you're going to stop Favid from trying to drink. Roll, both of you roll me raw decks to see who has a fast, faster hand. That's probably gonna be her. Yeah, that's probably gonna be her. I got a ten. Would that be sleight of hand? No, just a normal dex. Okay. You have to beat ten. You're not sleight of hand. You're not trying to be <laughs> sneaky about it. Yeah, that's a nat twenty right there. <laughs> yeah, that. Not only did Mar stop you from uh, drinking from the flask, in one sweep, she grabs it from your hand, and before she could drop, before before you could react, the flask is already uh, closed tight and in her pocket after one sweep from her hand. David looks slightly annoyed. Like, what? I could have handled it. We still have another job to do. In case you forgot. <sighs> All right, then. Also, I would like to point out, there are still dead bodies around you that you could possibly loot. Uh, I think that's more of a Mar thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm gonna root around in their pockets and such to see if I can find, like, a, uh, an or any kind of a, a clue as to uh, who they work for. Or... Okay, roll me an investigation. Oh. Ah. Okay. Uh, well, with that, you do not see any clue uh, for who they work for, but you do see uh, a scroll, one scroll, that is similar to earlier, one scroll of blight, and uh, its inscription is written down to be slightly different from the spell itself, wherein which, if this is used, it will be casted on the user. And also, you... Uh, gained uh, at least uh, 10 GP from the pocket of the boss and you find obviously uh, two daggers from Slim Shady uh, a longsword from the boss and uh, if I recall correctly another uh, a shiv or is basically like a smaller dagger from the from the human uh, thug that was represented by a triangle. So there's like about three dragger daggers, a, a long sword, uh, 10 GP, and a, one scroll. Uh, Favorite has a investigation plus three. Could he make a roll on it? Go ahead. You can certainly try. Up. Oh, nope. It's actually worse. Oh wait, no, it's, it's not, but it's still not good enough. It's a seven, but yeah, that's not good enough. Yeah, fav favor favored loots and uh, examines animals, not people. <laughs> so I'm assuming Dark has uh, taken what they would need. Uh, are you going to take all the weapons and... Uh, no, I'm just going to take the gold and the scroll. Okay, uh, just add, just like, uh, add into your inventory like a parchment. Suicidal blight. And just rename it to that. Just add a parchment to your inventory and just call it suicidal blight. So, are you ready to embark on your actual journey? <laughs> Yep, but before we do, I'm going to end the recording and then start a new one.